Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Low Budget Review Show. Now, um, I thought about this. I thought about three books and whether I should review them all together in one video or if I should give them each their own specific review and then do this overview. Obviously, I'm doing the overview. If you're a regular viewer, you know that I've already reviewed each one individually. Then I had to decide if I was going to make the overview just a random Sunday video or part of the low budget review show. Again, obviously the decision I made was to do it as part of the low budget review show. What I'm talking about is the Earth Versus series. So, um, a little refresher in case you didn't watch all of the previous three low budget review show videos. We have these three little tiny books Earth Versus The Nudist Camp Freaks by Judith Sonnet. Let's put it over there. Earth Versus The Lava Spiders by Candace Nola. And Earth Versus The Star Mummy by Lucas Mangum. And these were, this was all part of a 10 day challenge from Judith Sonnet. And so the authors had 10 days from starting the story to publication. And the theme was 1950s science fiction movies. Uh, one of the reasons I chose to review each book individually, well, the first, the big reason, the one that made it an easy decision is because I had just read The Talisman by Stephen King and Peter Straub, which is a huge honking book, took up a lot of time, and so I wasn't going to have any book reviews to post. So I decided I was going to read these three quick books, review them all individually, basically for the content. But the other reason that I wanted to do them individually was so that I could review each book on its own. I did mention the other books and that they were all part of this challenge, but I did not, or hopefully, if I remember, I just recorded those reviews, pretty sure I didn't compare the books to each other. That's what we're going to sort of do here. I want to talk about all three books as a set. And basically, uh, what we have is the clear winner. It's not a contest. My clear favorite was Earth versus the Nudist Camp Freaks. Um, and that's because this felt just like a 1950s science fiction story. Judith Sonnet was able to capture all of the tropes, all of the beats from a 1950s science fiction movie, and they're in here. I felt I could picture it in my mind as if it was on the drive-in movie screen or as if I were watching it on I'm covering up my own face. As if I were watching it on Superhost or Big Chuck and Houlihan, which became Big, Big Chuck and Little John, or even The Mummy and the Monkey, our current local Cleveland horror hosts. Um, <coughs> it really felt like a 1950s sci-fi movie. Uh, Judith Sonnet knocked it out of the park. And then I next read Earth vs. the Lava Spiders by Candace Nola, who is a fantastic writer, a wonderful person, great editor, editor publisher, reviewer, etc. But this felt the least like a 1950s sci-fi movie. It's set in the 50s. It hits a couple of those beats. We've got the, the, the teenagers at Lover's Lane. We've got the lights in the sky. We've got an attack by lava spiders. But there's it's much, much more graphic. Um, and it's... Uh, there's strong language, which Judith Sonnet avoided. And it's not the most plot heavy. There's very actual plot in this book. It's mostly... 
just scenes of lava spiders killing people, which I have no problem with, but I gave it a three out of five. I liked it, but it's, it, it wasn't, it, it, it was not as good as this and it didn't, I don't know what rules or suggestions Judith Sonnet set or gave to the other authors in this 10 day challenge. Um, I can see the inspiration from 50s sci-fi movies in Earth vs. the Lava Spiders, but it felt more like, and I said this in my review, it felt more like an original sci-fi channel movie that just happened to be set in the 50s. Uh, so this one, definitely the standout so far. There's a third one. Earth versus the Star Mummy by Lucas Mangum. And this one had uh, possibly the most strong language. I don't think it's as graphic as Earth versus the Lava Spiders. And it falls in between as far as, in, in between the other two books, as far as how the plot is, where it sort of falls in that comparison to 1950s sci-fi movies. Um, it's, it, it doesn't quite feel like it necessarily came out in the 1950s, but it's not, it doesn't completely feel like a made for sci-fi channel original movie the way that uh, Earth vs. the Lava Spiders does. So it's sort of in that middle ground between the other two books. Uh, I gave this one a three out of five. I enjoyed it. Uh, it had some interesting beats. I liked the breaks for a word from our sponsor. I really liked the ending. Um, so again, this one hit the beats of 1950s sci-fi movies, more so than Earth versus the Lava Spiders, less than uh, Earth versus the Nudist Camp Freaks, but didn't feel completely like a 1950s sci-fi movie. And again, I don't know what the criteria was, what Judith Sonnet said to Candace Nola or Lucas Mangum in, the, in this 10-day challenge. Um, but, so overall, let's see, get the right ones. Earth versus the Nudist Camp Freaks. Absolutely my favorite of these. I gave it four out of five on Goodreads, uh, but it's really more of a four and a half at least. Completely feels like a 1950s sci-fi movie. I would say next is um, Earth versus the Star Mummy. It feels more like a 1950s sci-fi movie than Earth vs. the Lava Spiders, and it has, it feels like there's more plot to me, um, even though it's a little jumpy, uh, in that the scenes, we sort of jump from scene to scene, if I remember correctly, um, sort of these abrupt changes from scene to scene, um, but I enjoyed it, three out of five, and then Another three out of five, it just, it wasn't my favorite of the three, Earth versus the Lava Spiders. Much less plot, not a lot of character, but a lot of Lava Spiders killing people, which for me is a good time. Uh, so there you have it. These are the three books in the Earth versus series, part of Judith Sonnet's 10-Day Challenge. Um, all enjoyable, all worth your time. Uh, I'll mention here, because I forgot to mention it when I did my review for Earth vs. the Nudist Camp Freaks, <laughs> there is a great movie, in my opinion, called The Lost Skeleton of Cadavra that is a, I'm going to say pastiche of 1950s sci-fi movies. I don't want to say parody, because I don't want you to think it's like a uh, airplane or scary movie or that type of thing. 
it's it's played straight it but it's absolutely hilarious because it's played straight the way that the actors deliver the dialogue the cheap special effects the cheap sets and props and the the weird storyline um this earth versus the nudist camp freaks really brought to mind that movie because you have a modern creator recreating something from the 50s and earth versus the nudist camp freaks does it wonderfully and the lost skeleton of cadavera also does it wonderfully uh author elizabeth matthew elizabeth massey's husband had something to do with that movie, designed props, I don't recall, and unfortunately I don't recall his name off the top of my head. I've met both Elizabeth Massey and her husband. They were both wonderful people. Uh, you should read Elizabeth Massey's books. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I 1950s Lost Skeleton of Cadavera. It came out in the 2000s. I don't remember the exact release date, but it absolutely feels like and sounds like and looks like a 1950s sci-fi movie, and it's hilarious. But that's just a little addendum. I meant to mention it when I was talking about this because it felt like this. This felt like that. But I forgot to, so it's in this video. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to in my discussion of these three books and comparing them putting them together um i recommend all three if you're only going to pick up one though absolutely go with earth, earth versus the nudist camp freaks by view sonnet but all three are worth are worth reading all right so my question for this video is <laughs> if this sort of situation comes up again and it will, because Judith Sonnet has had another 10-day challenge for hard-boiled crime, perhaps extreme crime. I have all three of those books as well. Um, so the question is, I guess whether or not you've watched all four videos, essentially in this little sort of mini-series within my low-budget review show series. Um, do you want to see individual reviews for all three books and then an overview like this would you just want one video reviewing all three books or i guess the other option would be individual videos don't care about an overview um that's the question what do you what do you think did you do you feel I've wasted my time, you've wasted your time, when you've got four videos about essentially 200 pages of story, because uh, 100 pages, these both close to 50. Um, is it worth four videos? Should it just be one? Should it just be three? Um, I'm not saying your answers are going to influence me in any way. Uh, and I don't know when I'm going to read those three books. I have, you know, of course, so much stuff to read. If I get in another bind, it's nice to have something like this. If I get uh, behind the eight ball again, as the kids would say, it's nice to have three books that I can read really quickly and do a bunch of videos. Uh, but what do you think about that? Did you like the shorter, if you watched them, did you like the shorter reviews for shorter books? And then this overview, do you not care one way or the other? I think I've covered all the permutations that are possible here. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care... To follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. 
that's all I've got. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.